Today in automotive history for August the 5th, in 1882, Enrico Bernardi patented the Motrice Pia, his petrol combustion engine. It had one cylinder, almost at the same time as German Carl Benz, who patented his original engine on October the 25th, 1882, and Gottlieb Daimler, who patented it on December 16th, 1883. It is difficult to establish who was the first man in the world who invented the automobile, but we can say that Bernardi gave a significant impulse to the concrete application of the petrol engine as well. He had started his studies on internal combustion engines in 1876, and in 1882 he built the Montrese Pia, named after his daughter, which he fitted to a sewing machine. <laughs> That's kind of funny. In 1884 he presented it to the National Exposition of Turin, that same year, he fitted the engine to his son's tricycle who drove it around the roads of Quinzano. Benz will fit his invention two years later in 1886 to a three-wheeled vehicle suitable for a grown man. In 1889, Bernardi built a more powerful engine called Lauro, which was fitted to his son's bicycle in 1892, creating a petrol-fueled motorcycle. And in 1894, he introduced a three-wheeled car. Sounds like he was first. Well, no. Sounds like he could have been first. He just didn't put it on a vehicle large enough to hold an adult. In 1882, the Standard Oil Company of New Jersey was incorporated by the Standard Oil Trust. The trust had been organized earlier in the year, bringing together John D. Rockefeller's oil empire under one central management run by Rockefeller and an inner circle, quote-unquote. In 1888, Bertha Benz, without her husband Carl's knowledge, drove her sons Richard and Eugene 14 to 15 years old, in one of Benz's newly constructed motor wagons, becoming the first person to drive a motor car over more than a very short distance. The distance was more than 60 miles. Wow, that is a long ways. In 1899, the Detroit Automobile Company was organized with Clarence A. Black as president. There's a lot of other folks that are mentioned as officers, but the one that's most notable is the mechanical superintendent, Henry Ford. It was the first venture of its kind in Detroit, as with many early car ventures, the company floundered and was dissolved in January 1901. But like last week, Henry Ford went on to do some pretty cool things. In 1902, William Vanderbilt from the U.S. drove a Moors to a record speed of 122 kilometers, which is 76.1 miles per hour, in France. The Moors was the first petrol-powered record holder. I guess it was the first record holder car? I'm not quite sure what that means. All right, in 1914, a lighting ceremony was held for the world's first electric traffic lights, used to control the flow of different streams of traffic. They were installed in Cleveland, Ohio, at the intersection of Euclid Avenue and East 105th Street by the American Traffic Signal Company. Wow, that's pretty cool. I'll have to head up to Cleveland and stand on that corner and just take it all in. All right, in 1923, the first public tours of the Ford Rogue plant were held. In 1947, Ferdinand Porsche was released from a French prison. Porsche had been arrested as a suspected Nazi collaborator by United States and French occupation authorities in the aftermath of World War II and held custody for two years. He would live to see his 75th birthday. In 1955, the one millionth Volkswagen, a standard Beetle painted gold to commemorate the occasion, was produced. Although designed in the 1930s, the Beetle was only produced in, in significant numbers from 1945 on. Mass production had been put on hold during the Second World War when the model was internally designated as the Volkswagen Type 1. Love drove the Spirit of America on the Bonneville Song Flats to a new land speed record of 407.5 miles per hour. The Spirit of America was the first of the modern record-breaking jet-propelled cars built with a narrow, streamlined fuselage, three-wheel chassis, and most significantly, turbojet engine. In 1974, the Ford Guest Center was open to the public, taking tours. In 1987, Chrysler Corporation purchased the American Motor Corporation from Renault, creating it as the Jeep Eagle division of Chrysler. In 1999, a Mini John Cooper LE was announced to jointly celebrate the Mini's 40th birthday and John Cooper's achievement in the racing arena. The cars were finished in Brooklyn green with white bonnet stripes matching the Cooper Works team colors and a red leather interior. Oh, that's pretty cool. Only available in the UK, production of the John Cooper LE was limited to just 300 units. It'd be cool to see one of those come across the auction block. And in 2010, the U.S. Export-Import Bank unveiled a loan guarantee for Ford Motor Company that would finance $3.1 billion in exports of cars and trucks to customers in Canada and Mexico. 
And that is it for today in automotive history. As always, thanks to 365daysofmotoring.com for these wonderful facts. Thank you for tuning in, and I will talk to all of you next week. Thanks for listening to the Collector Car Podcast. Don't forget to give us a nice rating on iTunes, and be sure to follow us on Instagram and everywhere else at the Collector Car Podcast.